Welcome everybody to your favorite podcast on the internet. I am Hari and my partners are Jeffrey and Misk. We are here today to help explain Unit 1 of Stats, which basically covers exploring one variable data. So let's start with the definition of statistics. Statistics is the science and art of collecting, analyzing, and drawing conclusions from data. Now, let's give some love to the smaller topics before we go to the bigger topics. Individuals versus variables. An individual is an object described in the data set, and they usually fall on the vertical axis, while a variable is an attribute that can take different values, and they are usually fall on the horizontal axis. Now, let's talk about a quantitative data versus categorical data. So, categorical and quantitative are different variables. A categorical is a variable where the data represents a group, like race and gender. And a quantitative variable is a variable that measures an amount, like height and weight. However, don't get this confused, because categorical variable can also represent numbers, but they have to not be measurements or and are instead a description. For example, zip code is a categorical variable because it's a description of your house, description of your area. Now let's talk about relative frequency table versus a frequency table. A frequency table shows the number of individuals having each value, while a relative frequency table uses proportions or percents of individuals having each value. And usually when you compare different groups, you use a relative frequency table. Now we're getting to the juicy stuff, graphs. We both have a pie chart and a bar graph, and both of these are used to represent categorical variables. A pie chart shows each category as a slice, and these slices are proportional to a relative frequency. Usually, all these slices add up to a whole or 100%. And a bar graph is used to display frequencies or relative frequencies. And these graphs show categories as bars. And the height of the bar shows the frequency or the relative frequency. So representing quantitative variables with graphs is a little bit different. For these, you can use dot plots, stem plots, and histograms. The idea of a dot plot is to put a dot above a location of a data value on a number line. For example, if you have a data set of 2, 3, 4, you would draw a number line and then put a dot above the points 2, 3, and 4 in a dot plot. Stem plots give a quick picture of the distribution but include actual numerical values. You have a, a specific number on the left side of the stem called the stem. And then you have a line, and then on the right side you have the other value. For example, 35 could be represented as 3, line 5, and the line kind of separates the tens digits from the ones digits. Histograms divide data into certain bins of equal width. Um, the I, the y-axis always shows the frequency or the relative frequency. They are purely for quantitative data and look somewhat like bar graphs, but aren't. They serve very different purposes. Describing the distribution of a quantitative variable. For this, we can use the acronym SOCS, or SOX. This stands for Shape, Outliers, Center, and Spread. The center represents either the median or the mean. The median is a resistant measure of center, which means that outliers don't affect it. The mean is a non-resistant measure of center because outliers do affect it. You can decide which center you want based on your data. If your data is more skewed, you would go with a median since it's more of an accurate depiction of what the data represents. Outliers are value that's values that differ from the overall pattern of the distribution. They're often very much lower than or very much higher than the rest of the spread. Shape. It's generally described as symmetric or skewed. If it's skewed, that means that a lot of the data values are more on one side than they are the other. For example, if it's right skewed, then a lot of the data values are located on the left side of the graph and, the, and starts to taper off on the right side. Other words that can be described 
used to describe these are unimodal, bimodal, and multimodal. Unimodal means there's one peak, bimodal means two peaks, and multimodal means many peaks. Spread can be described using IQR, standard deviation, and the range. Range is just the largest value minus the smallest value. This shows how much variability is in the data. Variability and spread are pretty much the same word and can be used similarly. Summary statistics. These are values that can easily dissect sets of data and can be used to further analyze them. These are pretty important when you get into box plots, which comes later. These include mean, median, standard deviation, IQR, and range. Mean is the arithmetic average, meaning you add up all of the data points and then you divide by the number of data points. This is non-resistant because outliers do affect this data point or this data value because you have to contribute these outliers into your total sum. Medians, on the other hand, are resistant because outliers don't affect them as much. These are the center point of a data set. Standard deviations and IQRs. Standard deviation is the average distance of the data points from the mean. This is also non-resistant, much like the mean, which is why mean and standard deviation go hand in hand. And then IQR and median go hand in hand because IQR shows the middle 50% of the distribution where the median is located. The middle 50% is represented from quartile 1 to quartile 3, which comes later in box plots. Now we're going to look at the graphical representations of summary statistics. So one uh, method of looking at summary statistics is box plots. Box plots are a graph which are divided into four sections, which each represent 25% of the data. This is useful for seeing possible outliers as well as marking the quartiles and medians. On the very left of a box plot, you have the minimum value, which is excluding outliers. From there to the lower quartile, you have the left whisker, which represents the lowest 25% of the data. From there, you have the lower quartile, or Q1, which divides the left whisker and uh, the middle 50% of the data, which is the range from the lower quartile to the high upper quartile. And that range is also called the interquartile range. That represents 50% of all of the values in the distribution, more specifically, the middle 50%. Within this interquartile range, the upper 25% and the lower 25% are divided by the median, which is the value in the very middle of the distribution. The upper quartile, like the lower quartile, serves to separate the interquartile range and the right whisker. And similar to the left whisker, the right whisker represents the highest 25% of the data, and the maximum signifies the highest value, which excludes the upper outliers. Now, I've talked about a lot about outliers while talking about whiskers. Outliers are values in the data set that don't fall under the general distribution or set of data. To test if a value is an outlier, um, for upper outliers, you add the upper quartile value with 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range, which is the upper quartile value minus the lower quartile value. And to find the lower outliers, it's the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the IQR. Now, let's look at comparing distributions of quantitative variables. Going back to describing the distribution of a quantitative variable, Socks can also be used to compare distributions. So, for example, if you're looking at shape, you can compare whether a distribution is left skewed or right skewed or symmetric. You can look at any potential outliers that are present in either of the distributions that you're comparing. You could look at the center, which you can uh, compare the medians of the graph. You can also use socks to compare the spread, which, as stated before, is the general range of the value. Now let's look at the normal distribution. This is important for future units such as Unit 2. So before we look into the normal distribution, let's talk about z-scores. So z-scores is a useful way to measure the distances of values in a data set. Standard deviation is used as the standard unit of measurement while measuring z-scores. So for example, if you have a certain data value in the data set, how you would use the z-score is that value is x amount of standard deviations away from the mean. So going off from there, the way you calculate a z-score is you take the value that you're looking at 
you, you subtract that by the mean and divide the, that entire thing by the standard deviations. Z-scores can also be called standardized values because they can be used for any sort of data set. So you could use it to compare maybe points in a soccer game, or you could use it on weights of people. Now let's talk about standardizing the data set. When a data set is standardized, the data, the over, the, all of the data present in the distribution, they're shifted by the mean and rescaled by the standard deviation. So how, did, how, how does shifting and rescaling affect the distribution? Well, shifting is adding or subtracting a certain value from the entire distribution. When shifting a distribution, the shape and spread are not affected and the measurements of position are shifted along with the values. Rescaling is essentially multiplying or dividing an entire distribution by a certain value. This can alter the distribution by stretching it horizontally or vertical, and it could also not affect it at all. And measurements of position such as mean, minimum, maximum range, and interquartile range will also be rescaled along with the distribution. So um, now we can take a better look at the normal model or the normal distribution. The normal distribution is the standard distribution used to compare like a standard data set ways you can describe the normal model. The mean is always zero. The standard deviation is one. Now looking at the empirical rule, also called the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. The empirical rule basically states that 68% of the data falls under one standard deviation of the, of the mean. Hence, the first value of 68, 95, 99.7. What this essentially means is that from negative one standard deviation to one standard deviation, that includes 68% of the entire distribution. So going further from there, 95% of the data falls under two standard deviations of the distribution, hence the second value of 68, 95, 99.7, and 99.7% of all the values fall under three standard deviations of the distribution. So the empirical rule only works for normal distributions. It won't work for any skewed distributions or any kind of distributions with an irregular shape. Thank you everyone for coming. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Check out all of our other podcasts, videos, and our handwritten notes. Links are in the description. See you guys next time.